Good morning everybody, welcome to my channel. Today we are going to talk about a completely creepy disappearance um, from 1900 um, on an island off mainland Scotland. Um, that's it. Like, subscribe, do all that stuff. My name is B Carter. See you in there. So weird. Just... I'm still half asleep. Okay. Morning. Hot. Oh, I got bed hair. I'm getting ready for the day. And while I do that, we're going to talk about Flannan Isles Lighthouse. Flannan Isles is a lighthouse um, near the highest point of of the Flannan Isles, which I think is like a group of islands, maybe. Um, in the outer Hebrides of the west coast mainland of Scotland. So it's like out in the ocean near Scotland. Excuse me, could you stop driving? Thank you. So anyway, it's a really little island um, that, it's a really little island that didn't have any inhabitants, it had a lighthouse on it, right? And the only inhabitants of the island were the three lighthouse keepers. Um, who at the time when this happened were Thomas Marshall, who was the second assistant, James Ducat, who was the principal keeper, and William MacArthur, which who was the third assistant. I don't really know what those titles mean, but guys, stop driving past my house. It was named after a 6th century bishop. He did build a chapel on the island and for a really long time shepherds would like bring um, their sheep over to graze in the island but they would never stay the night because they were afraid of the spirits that haunted the island. Anyway, so the lighthouse was first lit in 1899 and this happened on December 26, 1900. So you're looking at like a year that it was <laughs> open for before this happened. So there was a ship captain named Captain James Harvey who was transporting someone um, named Joseph Moore to the, um, was transferring a man named Joseph Moore to um, the lighthouse because he was a replacement keeper. Um, when they got there, Captain Harvey was like, hmm, because there was nobody there to meet them. And he thought that was really strange because usually you have like a, a welcome or like they come down to you know, meet ya. And nobody did. Um, so he like honked his horn. I don't really know how ships have horns, but look, I wasn't born in the 1900s, so I don't know. Um, dude honked his horn. Um, and what else did he do? Oh yeah, he honked his horn and he sent up a warning flare. Um, and he got no response from it. So we're all a bit suspicious at this point. I'm a bit worried about the three lighthouse keepers. So Joseph Moore rode ashore um, to see what the go was and he reported apparently having this overwhelming sense of foreboding as he was walking up the stairs. I had to google what that meant because I had no idea. Um, a foreboding means like basically this intense feeling that something bad is going to happen apparently. Okay. Um, so he had that feeling, he's walking up to the top of the cliff where the lighthouse is. Um, once he got to the lighthouse, he kind of noticed something was wrong basically straight away. First off, the, the door was unlocked, um, which was against protocol, procedure, whatever. Um, so that was a whole thing. And then when he went in there, two of the three coats were missing. But there was still one coat there. So that to me says that two of them left and went somewhere. And the third one also left and went somewhere, but he left his coat behind. And this is Scotland, like in the winter time. Like it's not, I think December's winter for them. It's fucking cold. It's cold and bloody summer over there, I reckon. And then again, I'm Australian, so fucking anything below 20 degrees Celsius is cold for me. Um, so yeah, uh, like, when he went into the kitchen, there was an overturned chair 
um, and like half eaten food at the table. So it's kind of like he described it as like someone had jumped up in a hurry um, and bolted out, which I'm guessing would probably be like the third guy that went out without his coat. Like he probably, you know, saw something or heard something and just kind of bolted, you know, whether that was to go help someone or what. Um, but this is the, the thing where, because basically everyone thinks that this shit was paranormal, right? So one of the things was that he noted, that Joseph Moore noted, was that um, the kitchen clock, like the clock in the kitchen, um, had stopped. Joseph Moore, um, he went back to the boat and he told James Harvey, the captain of the boat, what, what the go was. Um, it wasn't a very big island, so James was like, we'll find them, it's fine. And he sent his crew ashore to like go look for them so they sent out a search party covered the whole island and didn't find them or a trace of them or where they might have gone so harvey then he sent a telegram back to the mainland um to let them know what had happened and i'm just going to read it straight off this because it's easier uh, a dreadful accident has happened at flannan's the three keepers, Ducat, Marshall, and the occasional, who I'm guessing was MacArthur, because he was the third assistant, um, and the occasional have disappeared from the island on our arrival, where this afternoon no sign of life was to be seen on the island. Fired a rocket, but as no response was made, managed to land more, who went up to the station but found no keepers there. The clocks were stopped and other signs indicated that an accident must have happened about a week ago. Poor fellows, they must have blown over the cliffs or drowned trying to secure a crane or something like that. Night coming on, we could not wait wait to make something as to their fate. I have left more McDonald, boy master, and two seamen on the island to keep the light burning until you make other arrangements. Will not return to Oban until I hear from you. I have repeated this wire to Muirhead in case you are not at home. I will remain at the telegraph office tonight until it closes if you wish to wire me. Wow, I just realized how hard it must have been to communicate back then like with people from long distances. So what they meant about the crane is that there was a crane. So, so on the landing platform, there were ropes strewn all over the rocks. Um, ropes which were, they, they held down, or they would have usually held down a brown crate um, 70 feet above the platform on a supply crate. Um, but I mean that was gone like it like it was just the ropes there now So their theory is that like while they were trying to secure this um, or whatever um, Like an unexpected wave has come along and got them um, I think the issue most people have with that was that it was calm and they were experienced lighthouse keepers Like they should have seen that coming. But anyway, we're gonna go back from the start um, so someone named Robert Muirhead who um, Was one of the people that he sent this telegram to, telegram, is that what it's called? He came out basically to like investigate what the go was. Um, who he was the board superintendent. Um, so he knew all three men that had gone missing. He basically found nothing over and above, like nothing, he basically found nothing else other than what Joseph Moore had already reported. Um, he noticed that, except like, he noticed that the, the logs, so they, they have logs, right? It's like a captain's log or whatever. So Thomas Marshall was writing in this log at the time um, and he reported um, severe winds to the likes of which I have never seen before in 20 years. So like that was strange. Um, and he also noted that, like, in the log, said that the principal keep keeper, um, James Ducat, had been very quiet, and William MacArthur, who was the third assistant or the occasional, um, had been crying. Strange because he was a sea, he was what they call, I don't even know what mariner means, like, I'm guessing that means seaman of some description. Um, but he was like seasoned, like he'd been through storms, like why was he crying about a storm? Like nobody understood that part, like why he was crying about a storm. 
Um, so then there was like the 13th of December rolls around and it stated that the storm was still carrying on, still there, still going. But they, the, the thing was that this lighthouse was freaking brand new. It was only lit first time like a year prior to this. They were 150 feet above sea level. Like why were they scared of a storm when they were perfectly like chill up there, you know? Like that's what people couldn't get. Like why are you scared? You're safe and you know that you're safe because you've been doing this for decades. And the other thing is that like, there was no storm. So not from the 12th to the, the 12th to the 14th, they looked and they were like, no, no, no. Like there was no storms from the 12th to the 14th. Like there was no storm on December 13th at all. Like there wasn't a storm until December 17th. The last entry into the log was on December 15th and it said, um, storm ended, sea is calm, God is God is overall. Okay. <laughs> and so, like, not only with him, like, the third guy leaving his coat behind, but apparently, like, all three of them leaving their posts at the same time is, like, strictly prohibited. Like I said, right, the weather conditions. So the weather conditions is what they were kind of focusing on the most because there was just, there was no storm <laughs> from the 12th to the 14th and... The log basically said that it was on the 13th um, and that it had, like, the last entry said that it had ended by the 15th. So it's kind of like, my dogs are wrestling out the front of the door. So it's kind of like, but there wasn't a fucking storm. So obviously the case goes unsolved. Like, they don't know what happened. There is no trace of the men at all is ever found, ever found, ever, 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 ever. So I kept talking and my camera ran out um, and I finished my face. So we're just gonna quickly like chat about some shit about it. Okay, so none of the lighthouse, lighthouse keepers were ever found, but in subsequent years, right, there, there was just, there was no trace of them at all. They just went poof, like they just completely fucking disappeared. And there's no trace of them whatsoever, anywhere at all. Not at home, not in the ocean, nothing ever washed up. Like, and that was the thing, is like if they, you know, were hit by a rogue wave while they were trying to like get this crane or whatever, that was the theory, then why didn't anything ever wash up? Like nothing at all, no clothes, no boots, like no bodies, no nothing. But having said that, you also need to understand that this is the 1900s, like they didn't understand I don't think the way that a wave could, like, a, that a tide could really take you um, and where a rip could really take you, um, like, now we understand that it takes all of a couple of minutes to be in the middle of the ocean, you know, and because it's so unpredictable, like, it's impossible to tell where, what it, not impossible, but it's hard to tell where it would have gone. Obviously, we have experts for that now, but in 1900, I doubt that they had that knowledge um so i suppose it's still possible and they just kind of washed out somewhere um that nobody ever would have looked um but obviously the biggest thing here is like paranormal activity because so many people are like you know in subsequent years they would say that they um you know they could hear um strange voices saying the names of the dead three men and blah, 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 blah. As far as I know, other than those slight paranormal issues, like nobody has reported anything else sinister, meaning that no one else has gone missing. And I feel like it's been like 120 years since this happened. Like it would happen again. I mean, unless they have like a rotating clock of like they only do it every 121 years so maybe like there'll be another one because there's still a lighthouse there and there's still lighthouse oh well no actually there wouldn't be lighthouse keepers anymore because pretty sure lighthouses are automated now like they'd have maintenance guys i guess maybe one of the maintenance guys is going to be next i'm very sorry if you're a maintenance guy at this lighthouse i don't mean to scare you but it's possible but yeah so like it's just all it's just all such a mystery and it's just like nobody knows. I think that maybe if there was like modern technology 
um, or something at this time it probably like they might have been found or they might have been able to put together a story um, the fact that the, the clock was stopped was really creepy though that I can't explain um, but obviously because the last log was on the 15th of December um, and I, I believe from reading the stories that they logged every day um, and the last log was on the 15th of December and they went like the Joseph Moore and Captain Harvey didn't go to the island until December 26 like the lighthouse was unmanned for like over a week um, and something really bad happened and like I just thank the Lord that I live in a time where mobile phones are a thing because like I just it would be so hard to not have communication with anyone while you live in a like and like that's like the definition of fucking remote like I've lived in what people consider these days remote which is a small town of like 26,000 people that to us, <laughs> to us now is remote can you imagine living on an island where there's just you and two other lighthouse keepers and that is it like that's fucking remote and that would scare the absolute shit out of me because literally no one would know obviously if something happened to you so anyway, that is the story today. I was a bit all over the place because I just woke up. I'm awake now, but like at the start of the video I wasn't. So I apologise for the yawning. I'll get my husband to edit something like in front of my face while I yawn because nobody wants to see my tonsils. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching. My name is Bikara. Please like and subscribe and follow me on Twitter and all that lovely stuff because I say a lot of random shit on Twitter and it's funny. Well, I think it's funny. And, like, if you don't laugh at your own jokes, who's gonna? Right? So, yeah. Thank you so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, all that lovely stuff, and I will see you in the next one.